The Wealthy Life is brought to you by investment dealer Raymond James. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James advisor can do for you. Welcome back. Want to be a philanthropist? It's easier than you think. Joining us today is Cindy Burry, an experienced financial professional to discuss how to support the charities you believe in. Cindy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sybil. So what is a philanthropist? That term is so misunderstood. A philanthropist is someone who believes they can change the world by one kind act at a time. Well, I'd like to change the world. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you would too. Yes. <laughs> yes. So every little bit counts? Every act counts. Yes, it does. So where does someone get started? How do they pick the charities they want to support? Um, charities, frankly, it should be a personal choice. It has to be something that kind of calls to you. Um, some people choose to volunteer their time to, for example, a local charity. Other people choose to gift differently. And to select a charity, it has to be something that calls to you and is close to you. And you feel like you have a, a meaningful impact if you support yes. that charity. Correct. So people can donate time. They mm -hmm. can donate money. Yes. What are other ways they can support charities? Um, they can support charities through, we'll talk about the gifting of monies, because sometimes you can gift to charity immediately in the year of, or you can design it so you can gift to them over time. And often, gifting over time to a charity can be beneficial. Well, I think it's also a lot more affordable for people mm -hmm. to give along the way. And if you choose to give, for example, a lump sum, often when we gift through foundations, it does allow you to have deductions and um, some other benefits, and well, it can and, gift over time. And why not reap the rewards now? I don't know about mm -hmm. you, Cindy, but I like to see the benefits of my gift yeah. while I'm still alive. Yes. But I would like to leave a lasting legacy, as I'm sure many of our viewers would. That's correct. So what are the things that they need to plan for today to ensure that their money continues to give long after they're gone? Well, I think there's three points. The first is, is have your children engaged. Um, explaining to them your why, why this is important, why you're choosing to, for example, build a foundation and have it give in time in the future. When your children are involved, it makes the journey a lot different too. Um, the other reason is if you have a will, if you're from you know about my age group, a lot of us were raised not to share your will. Please open your will. Please review your will with your family. If you can't, the third one is, is to bring together your professionals, your accountants, your lawyers, your investment specialists. And again, as you design your journey from today forward, in order to carry your legacy, the people who are actioning for you need to understand your why, your passions, and what you would like. If mm -hmm. you do not communicate with them, how would they ever know? Yeah, and if they don't know, right. that can create some awkward conversations and maybe even mm -hmm. some contesting of the will. Correct. And surrounding yourself with professionals who also believe in gifting can be a wonderful fit. Now, what is a scenario you can think of where things go wrong. If somebody hasn't planned ahead, hasn't had that conversation with their family or their professionals, what happens? Well, in British Columbia, we call it the Wills Variation Act. So when you open, when someone passes and their will is reviewed, can you imagine being a family member who had no idea? No idea. So not only have you shocked your family and created potentially a, a division of your family, mm -hmm. you missed all those years of that journey where you can share with them the rewards and all those great conversations when and you do make be, the world. They could be part of it they as sure well. Can. I remember my dad supporting a charity many, many years mm -hmm. ago and sharing with me the excitement he had mm -hmm. over raising money and give it, giving it to that mm -hmm. group. Well, it inspired me to start giving to that group as well. And sometimes people give to charities, maybe they've helped them out in the past during a hard time. Mm -hmm. So as a parent, if you share those stories with your children, it's just not about the gifting, it's also about your life story. So be transparent, bring your children on board, surround yourself with others, make sure you're doing this in the most beneficial way to you. And when your last day is here, your family will continue for it because they know your story. So based on how you described a philanthropist and all these ways mm -hmm. to give, you don't need to be rich nope. to be a philanthropist. As we discussed, you can give $2 at the uh, cashier in the grocery store. That's a small step forward. 
Yep, just every little bit helps, or even sure your time does. if you don't have the money. Correct. But planning ahead is key for a couple of reasons, not only to see the benefit and make sure you don't have those awkward situations, but is there some tax benefits people could Huge receive? Huge tax benefits. Philanthropists give because they want to make the world a better place, and unfortunately, not all of them realize that they're leaving a lot of tax credits aside. So I have philanthropists I work with who um, don't want the credit, so I suggest they increase their donation based on the credit. But good planning mm -hmm. can make sure that you minimize your taxes and maximize the gift at the end of the day. That's correct, simple. Oh, Cindy, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure.